One thing about Charlie Wilson, you, you record now. One thing about Charlie Wilson, you can't put his his songs on video because he want all his. He will yeah. shut. They will shut your whole video down if you play something from Charlie Wilson. Wow. There ain't no, ain't no, ain't no. This ain't being played in this country. This ain't being played nowhere <laughs> at all on Facebook. You play Charlie Wilson. That's why y'all. I love that song. That's one of my favorite gospel songs. But y'all will never hear me say it on play it on Facebook. They will shut down that whole broadcast. Wow. Yeah, they don't. He, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. They don't play that. But anyway, how you doing today? Talk about sermon today. See, this, when you when you're blessed, you know it. Why? Huh? You don't care about giving away your blessings. Amen. See, when you're blessed, you don't care about giving away your blessings. Why? Anybody know why you don't care about giving away your blessings when you're blessed? Huh? Because when, I, when I'm not thinking about the blessings, that means I'm walking in the anointing. When I'm not thinking about the blessings, and I don't care about the blessings, that means I'm walking in the anointing. And you never say that you are anointed. That's for others to see God. See, the anointing comes when somebody says, how can you do that? See, I told them the other day, if you, if, if I ask you, uh, uh, um, 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 my daughter back there, if I, and I ain't seen her so long, I, I keep forgetting her. Vanessa, if I ask Vanessa why she loves me. Vanessa, come in for a second, Vanessa. Come in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, I can tell, uh, I, I need, because I, 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 need, I, need, I need my ego stroke right now. Why you love me, Vanessa? Why you love me? Why you love me? Because of who you are. Thank you. Thank you. She don't love me, y'all. Anybody know why she don't love me? Huh? She gonna love me after this, though. Anybody know why she don't love me? She said she love everything about me. She, she love who I am. You love me? Why you love me? Because you do. You don't love me. You don't love me. You ever, like, like if, I, if I walk over and, and, and you mad at me and you cussing me out and I walk over and give you $100 in the midst of you being mad, you, you'll say, why, why you did that? That's what love does. God is love and love is God. Do you know God? Every time you think you know God, God will do something greater to show you there's something about him you don't know. So you got to understand something that if I can explain that why I love you, I don't love you. Because nobody really knows what? Love. Y'all look at that lady, y'all say, she got to love Bishop. Why? Because she don't know why. If you know why you love somebody, you can know why not to love me. God is the only thing that does not have an opposite. You see it now, huh? Because if you love me, and I don't, I don't, I don't, and I tell you you gotta pay when I do your taxes, you can unlove me. <laughs> anybody hear? Anybody feeling what I'm saying right now? Amen. So that leads me into my title of my sermon. The fire is my witness. Come on, Bishop. The fire is my witness. Are we talking about anything? The fire. He is my witness. I'm going to let y'all rest today. You don't have to pick your Bibles up because I'm coming from the, the, the apocalypse of the book of Abraham. The apocalypse. I'm, 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 you know, I'm in the lost books of the Bible. I am having a ball. And, and, and y'all can tell I'm in it because they're saying the, the teacher don't wake up with Jesus and I went somewhere else. Hallelujah. And I, went and, and I went into love. I don't know why I'm teaching like this. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, the apocalypse of Abraham chapter 19. So y'all just sit back and chill. Um, one of the greatest readers of all time. And one of the greatest readers of all time will read for us today. So, and that's our very own pastor. That's our very own pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. I told him, I told him, hey Richard, I told him the other day, I said, in order to be president, you gotta, you, you gotta be crazy. I say, <laughs> he said, right. <laughs> Uh, Trump, Trump, Trump put crazy on president, and, and, and so now, now our governor tried to be president. <laughs> so, so if you got to be crazy to be Trump president. That means Richard, you could be president. Huh? I told him. I told him that last week. Yeah, I told him last week. I'm just, I'm just trying to throw that party for the ones that wasn't here last week. 
Put your hands together for our pastor real quick. She's going to read the scripture for us. Read, Pastor. And a voice came to me out of the middle of the fire saying, Abraham, Abraham. And I answered saying, here I am. Here am I. And he said, look at the wide places, areas, expanses, which are under the firmament, which is the sky and the stars, on which you now stand. Notice that no other place has yielded the one for whom you have searched or who has loved you. While he was still talking, the areas opened up. Below me were the heavens, and I saw a fire which was widespread. There was a light which is the storehouse of life. There was the dew that God will use to awaken the dead. The spirits of the righteous, those had, that had gone before, and the spirits of the souls who are yet to be born. Judgment and righteousness, peace and blessing, are an innumerable, innumerable host of angels and the living ones and the power of the invisible glory sat above the living ones. All of these were the seventh firmament on which I stood. And I looked down from the high mountain on which I stood onto the sixth firmament. Mm. And there I saw a host of angels of pure, mm. of pure spirit without bodies whose duty was to carry out the commands of the fiery angels who were upon the seventh front. Mm. As I was standing suspended over them, as I, as I stood stand suspended over them, and I looked down on the sixth firmament, and there were no other powers any, of any form, only the angels of pure spirit. I was standing on its elevation, and on his firmament, mm. There was nothing in any form and no other host, but only the spiritual angels. I saw a host on the seventh firmament, and he commanded that the sixth firmament should be removed from sight. My God, my God. And I saw there on the fifth element, a fifth firmament, the powers of the stars which carry out the commands laid upon them. And the elements of the earth obeyed them. My God, my God. Anybody here in this? My God. Huh? My, the fire is my witness. The fire is my witness. Whatever I'm going through is my fire. And, and this, this is what I don't get about us being on earth. Why do you expect what you're going through to be over? The details of it might change, but your going through does not. The go through don't change. How God used people to let you know you're going through, it don't happen. The fire is your witness. There's evidence of God when there is fire. There's evidence of God. This building's on fire. Bishop inside the building and it's burning out of control. And, and there's no way Bishop can be alive. And all to myself, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you see Bishop walk out of the building. You know that it was nothing he could have did. The only way he came out of there was God brought. But y'all don't want to give God a chance to work in people's lives. Two, Mr. Barry, he was here. He would, he would, he would tell us, "Stop talking to yourself." Hallelujah. See, but God said, "Pray without ceasing." See, prayer is a form of communication. Yes, it is. So when I, the problem with why we are stuck is because it ain't the talking to ourselves that's the problem. The problem is listening to yourself. Stop listening to yourself. I was going to preach a, I was going to preach a sermon this morning until God showed me the. I was looking for the verse that I was going to preach from, 
And God showed me the evidence and the power that is displayed when he told you next time I will not baptize you with, with, with water and spirit. Next time I will baptize you with the pureness that ain't nobody working but God in your life. I'm going to baptize you with spirit and fire. I'm going to baptize you with spirit and fire. The fire is my witness. Pastor, I, I, know, that, I know that was a little right, but I'm going to need you. <laughs> there was a question on, was a question on Wake Up With Jesus. I'm going to wake up with you. There was a question on Family Feud yesterday. They said, name some of the things that you take your glasses off for. And one of them was to read. And Pastor, I thought about that question when Pastor took off the glasses to read. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to need you to read this for me. We gonna, can we wake up with Jesus this? We're going to wake up with Jesus this. So I'm going to take my time and we're going we gonna, to we gonna go walk. Can I walk through this? Because y'all ain't been on Wake Up With Jesus in a while. I'm going to remind you what Wake Up With Jesus sounds like. And you might be inspired on um, uh, 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 Teacher Hall. Tisha Hall, you might be inspired to get back on. Well, I've been missing you, Tisha. Uh, Pastor Reed, come And a voice came to me. I'll and a it. voice came to me. A voice came to me. Oh, I'm sorry, little Mo. What's up, man? Hello, little Mo. <laughs> he say, he talking about come in. He's doing his head like Come in. Hey, man. I know little Mo. They don't call you your right name. I understand. He, he's always said, come here. Come here, bitch. Come here. A voice came to me. What's coming to you? What's coming to you? There's, there's, there's no power in your life because you, you listen to, to, to too many voices. There's a whole lot of voices going on. But there's only one voice that matters. But you don't recognize the voice because you don't, you don't go to the place where the voice is originated from. And the closest place that we can go to the origination of the voice is a holy place called church. So if I'm not going to the place where I can learn to recognize the voice, that means all the other voices I'm listening to. And then I begin to repeat the voices that are coming to me. And, and, and then I listen to the voices that are coming to me. I'm listening to all of them because I'm, I don't recognize the voice. But there's a voice that's going to come to you. But in order to hear that voice that comes to you, you've got to stop listening to yourself. You've got to walk in the assurance and the confidence that God is talking to me. And the only way I can walk in the assurance and that God is talking to me is that I know that everything that is about me, everything that is around me, everything that is living, is living because of God. That's when I get to the lowest common denominator. Stop trying to take care of what God created. If you put God put you in impossible places so you can so you can see Him do the impossible. But when we get in impossible places, we call on we call on limited people. We expect limited people to help us out. I won't give God a chance to let the fire be my witness. Talk to me, Pastor. Out of the middle of the fire, saying. Out of the middle of the fire. Yeah, I look like a junkie. Yeah, I look like a whole mama. Yeah, I look like, and guess what? What do you do when people say something about you and it ain't good and it's true? What do you do? When people say something about you. It ain't good, but it's true. What do you do when you're bishop? And your favorite missionary, and all y'all my favorite missionary, the one that I'm looking at and talking to right there, you my favorite at that time. And your favorite missionary calls you Maurice. What do you do? Huh? You stay in the fire, saints. She's trying to pull you out of the fire. She's trying to pull you out of the place where, where God is, a, is about to show his power. It's easy to remain calm when there's no waves in the ocean. But some of y'all got baptized when the waves were knocking us down. Y'all remember? Anybody remember? 
The waiting was knocking us down. But we baptized anyway. Hello, somebody. Y'all have never heard me say I'm not going to baptize y'all today because the waves too high. Hello, somebody. We got in the water, and, 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 and I thought Dina was going to float away. Y'all remember that? I baptized Dina in the name of the Father, Son, and she said, Bishop, Bishop, and next thing I was going away. But we baptized anyway. We were worried about nobody drowning because we were doing a heavenly thing. Yeah, yeah. We were doing a heavenly thing. It's not the circumstances that got you messed up. It's the place, it's the fight that you won't accept where God put you and God put you in a place that this is God we're dealing with. Do you know, don't you know, God ain't gonna put you no place if he loves you but in heaven, anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Wherever I am, I know God put me there. When I don't know God put me there, I think I'm going through hell. But when I know God put me there, I know this too is heaven. Come on, now. Come on. This is why I come to church. Because <clears throat> I, need, I need assurance. Come on, somebody say assurance. assurance. I need assurance. That I'm in heaven. Hello, somebody. Are we all right? Pass the me. And I answered, saying, Here am I. And he said, Look at the wide places which are under the firmament on which you now stand. Now, I just told you, look at the wide places. This heavenly place that I put you, it don't look like heaven. It don't look like peace. It looked like hell. It feels like hell. Because I'm listening to myself. I'm listening to people around me. I'm listening to the multitude of spirits. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm listening to myself. I'm listening to the people around me. I'm listening to the multitude of spirits. But if I'm in a place, God created me. And if he had not created me, I couldn't be standing where I'm standing. And if God created me out of love, I'm standing in heaven no matter what it looks like. Am I saying anything to anybody? Wherever I am, I'm here because God put me here and he put these circumstances on me so you can know that he's with me. Anybody hearing me right now? I feel like dancing already. Pastor, read to me. Now that no, no, notice that no other place has yielded the one for whom you have searched for who has loved you. No other place. It is. No other place, Pastor. No other place. Pastor, hit this, Pastor. Please look this way. I need you to feel this one. I need to feel it coming from you. I need you to preach to me right now. No other place has yielded. Y'all understand what God just did? Y'all, that's why I don't care about what, what God called me, because God don't care about what he called himself. He just called himself a place. Because there's only one place that cannot yield what God can yield, and that's you and me. Come on, somebody. Come on now. So if God don't mind calling himself a place, why am I concerned about what he called me? He said there's no other place that can yield what I yield. Anybody hear what I'm saying? No other place can make you. No other place can keep you. And you don't know that I'm keeping you until I break you out of that fire. That fire is my witness. Hello, somebody. Talk to me, Pastor. While he was, while he was still talking, the areas opened up. Below me were the heavens, and I saw a fire which was widespread. Below me. If I'm with God, I've already overcome everything that's trying to worry me. If I'm with God, I'm, I've already overcome everything that says it's got control of me. If I'm with God, I ain't worried about what's my foot what, what, under my foot do. Somebody went to take it up. Take hope. Take hope. If I let you go to sleep in church and you my grandson, that means I gotta let everybody else go to sleep in church. Sit up, man. Yeah, amen. Sit up. I know she pretty, but tell her you got, I can't stay on the phone. I know mama, I, I, can't, I can't stay on the phone until 3 o'clock because I got, my granddaddy going to talk about me in church tomorrow. I know she pretty. So y'all hear what I'm saying now? God placed you somewhere. 
He said, I am the place that created you, and if I'm the place that created you, I have the right to place you where I want to place you. And if I can just get my mind off of where I'm at and get my mind on who, who gave me the opportunity to be here, I won't worry about where I'm at. The fire is my witness. Come on, Pastor, read to me. There was a light, which is the storehouse of life. I'm going to send an angel your way to remind you that you're already in heaven. What you going to do? I asked somebody this morning. I said, what you going to do when you walk... You, you know why God won't let you in the pearly gates? Hmm? Because when you walk in the pearly gates, you're going to see this world that you're in right now. Heaven and earth are the same, brothers and sisters. But what makes it heaven or earth is your behavior. What makes it heaven or earth is your acceptance. When you get to heaven, you're going to say, oh my God, I see the little raggedy red doors on my church. And they is right. But guess what? You know why I don't fix them doors? Hmm? I'm not concerned about the edifice. I'm concerned, I'm concerned about what's coming through the doors to be nourished. And if you're coming in here for perfection, because the church is perfect, I'm letting you know before you even come through here, the church ain't perfect. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So, what I'm saying to you right now, when you know that God is someplace, where can he not be? Can God be everywhere? Yes. yes. I'm trying to help you preach this. Can God be everywhere? Yes. yes. Is God everywhere? Yes. yes. So, if I'm going through something and God is everywhere, I'm only worried because I don't think God, I'm worried because I don't think God is here. I'm worried because I can't see beyond what I see with my natural eye. The Bible says that God is omniscient. That means he's, he's omnipresent. That means he, he's everywhere. So guess what? If I, if, if I got a situation, he's in my situation. If I got a circumstance, he's in my circumstance. If I got, if I got trouble, he's in my trouble. He's omniscient. He ain't just say he's every place. He's everywhere. He is the place that is everywhere. He's the place that created. And he said, can nobody create what he created? And it was just saying. Amen. So he's the place that not only created you, but also created your circumstances. Right. You better hear the word of God. Right. And if I know that God created my circumstances, why am I worried if I know God? Because okay. if I know God, I know that God is love and love is God. And I know that love will always, not some of the time, but love will always take care of what it created. Amen. The problem is I, I don't really know God. The problem is I used to know God, but I started listening to myself because all the people were telling me that I couldn't be and what I couldn't be and what I couldn't be. And I heard so long. So I started not only listening to myself, I started telling myself, this is all I'll ever be. I started telling myself, this is all I'm going to ever be. Read to the Pastor. There was the do God that God will use. Oh my God! To awaken you. And keep reading, Pastor. Watch what He's gonna do with that do. The spirits of the righteous, those that are gone on before, and the spirits of the God, those souls who are yet to be born. Yet to be born. I am so glad I had the opportunity to be born again. But this is our problem. We don't know that God is everywhere. When I'm born again. I won't look at mama that I know. I won't look at daddy that I know. I look at a daddy that I can't see and want to know. Hello, somebody. When I'm born again, I look at a daddy that I can't see. Hello, somebody. And want to know. Because he just told me that you're going through what you're going through. But I'm going to drop a do on you. Hello, somebody. Are you going through what you're going through? But I'm going to drop a do on you. You're looking bad right now, but don't you worry.
When I say, look what I'm doing, I'm complaining. When I say I can't stop doing what I don't want to do, I'm complaining. But when I stop complaining, God will drop his due season on me. I got too many dues going on that I'm doing to receive the due season of God. Hello, somebody. As long as you think you're doing it, you're not ready to receive his due season. He said, I'm also going to do it for the righteous. He said, but I also have a due season for those that are not righteous. And the ones that are righteous, they're waiting on their due season. And their due season is to see you become righteous. But I cannot expect to see your due season as long as you think you're doing what God don't want you to do. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm in this fire. While I'm in the fire, God said, is there one that know me? Come on, somebody. Is there one that know me? Come on, Deacon Rap, didn't wake you up. Come on, Deacon Rap. Is there, is there one that know me? I'm going to call you next. Ebony, you're going to be next. I'm trying to call y'all out of the fire. I'm trying to save your life. Come on, Deacon Rap. So this is what God is saying. The fire is my witness. Hello, somebody. Anybody with me? What's your witness? The fire, the fire is my witness. So uh, next time I'm going to call your name, I can call Dick Rav taking a nap on me. What do you think, this Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> the fire is my witness. So now, what am I to do? He's going through. He's in trouble. He just lost a son. He don't know what to do. He's cussing everybody out. He's drinking. He's smoking. He, he can't deal with the pain. He's in the midst. Y'all want to send him to counseling. Y'all want to tell him he needs some more church. But I want to know, do you have a witness of fire? Come on, somebody. I need to know, do you have a witness of fire? I'm on the outside, and his fire is burning on the inside. I'm on the outside, and fire is burning on the inside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come on the inside where his fire is burning because I have a witness of fire. I have a witness to tell you how to deal with the fire. I have a witness of saying, I was in the fire, I came out of the fire, and because I came out of the fire, I ain't scared to go back in the fire to bring you out of the fire. Anybody hear what I'm saying? When you go in to help somebody where they're not expecting you to help them, that says you have come out of the fire, and the fire has become your witness. Anybody hear what we said today? He's in the fire. The scripture didn't say that he took him out of the fire. He said he sent the angel in the fire because the angel knew he, had, he or she had the power to come out of the fire because somebody came and took them. Out of the fire. Dollar books of scurvy cats. Most cool cats are scurvy cats. I was a cool cat, so I know that I was a scurdy cat. But now I ain't scared. I'll deal with your fight. Pass the read to me. And the spirits of those souls who are yet to be judged, be born. Judgment and righteousness, peace and blessings, and an innumerable host of angels. Now wait, this what I gotta take in the fire. I got to take the power of a lot of angels that help make me, that are not no longer here with me. And the reason I'm taking the angels that help make me, that are no longer here with me, I'm not hearing them. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm taking on their spirits. My hand is going to the glory. She's not here with me, but I but when I when I deal with somebody in the fight, I take on her spirit. Gail is not here with me no more. She's gone to glory. But 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 she, she can't talk to me in the natural. So what I do is when I come in the fight, I bring her spirit. Come on, somebody. Mickey ain't with me no more. But but, but when he can't talk to me right now, but when I come to you, the things that he put in me that came from God, I bring it in that fight. I bring the spirit. So I ain't going in there by myself. 
That's why it's so imperative that you, you, you ever notice when you go to a home going, very seldom, except for, except, except for them people in Pompano, they, they talk about the bad. I know, I know she said, that lady wasn't good to me. <laughs> you know them with your people. You know, I ain't gonna call your name, ma'am. You and your people. That lady, okay, okay, I don't know what y'all talking about. That lady, I just going to tell the truth. That lady wasn't good to me. I say, Lord. I say, Lord. I say, see, you were there when you were there? So, Jerry, you were there? Yeah, yeah. you were there. Where you going, ma'am? You scared of the fight? I mean, uh, Vanessa, you scared of the fight? Get back to her. Huh? Okay, go on. But leave your keys. There you hand. Oh, okay, but let's take it. I know, bro, I know. Anybody hear what I'm saying? You ever notice that when somebody go on, all you think about is the good they were? Because that's what you carry into the fire. You carry the good into the fire. They, they can't talk to you, but there's anything that they put in you that is good, that means you're carrying their spirit. You're not alone. Now you have who's on it? Heaven's on it. Come on, somebody. I, I'm going to let her read through this because I got to get to a place where y'all at right now. And y'all didn't realize y'all were there. Read to me, Pastor. I'm going to let her read through this. And the power of the invisible glory sit, sat above the living one. The power of the what? The invisible glory. The power of the, what you can't see. Bro, you ain't homeless. You, you, you being taken care of by God. The roof, is, the, the, the heavens is your roof. Stop worrying about it. Stop looking at the circumstances and know who created you and know that you were created out of love. God is love and love is God. And God even named you love. In the beginning there was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And verse 14 says, uh, 1 and 14 says, and the word became flesh. So let's do this right. In the beginning there was love. And love there was, uh, and, and, and there, in the beginning there was love. Love was God and love was with God. And then he said, and the love became flesh. So God said, I name all of y'all love. So when you get crazy, I won't forget who you are to me because I named you what? Love. So carry that love into the fire. Let heaven's army come down and help, help you as you step into the fight that somebody's already in. Circumstances somebody's already in. Read to me, Pastor. All of, the, all of these were in the seventh firmament. There we which, go. On which I stood. Okay. Y'all know what the firmament is? Heaven. Hey, the priest, he said amen. Go ahead. The firmament is heaven. Somebody say heaven. heaven. Y'all heard somebody say heaven help us. Yeah. That's somebody saying, step into my fire and help me right where I'm. Bring me some, some thing that I don't understand. The seventh firmament is heaven. Read, Pastor. Watch this now. Watch how God broke this down. And I took down from the high mountain mountain on which I stood up to the sixth firmament. The sixth firmament. No, sixth firmament, firmament is? Anybody know? Earth. So, this is how we know. When you in heaven, Deacon Richard, and you ain't split, you, about to, I mean, you, you can't, you getting this. The seventh firmament is heaven. Know what that is? Resting while others work for it. Anybody hear me? The number six says complete arresting. I mean, number seven says means complete arresting. Six means what? Anybody? Working. So when you're on the sixth firmament, all those down there, they, they got to work for heaven. They, they can earn heaven. When you are resting in heaven, then God says you're already in heaven. But while you're acting like you are in the sixth firmament, acting like you're working for it. Anybody just heard that? He, she, he said, you're on the, you're already in heaven. Do you hear what I just said? Amen. Just live, saints. Y'all can't live because y'all want to be happy. When there's happiness, there's sadness. But when there's joy, there's joy when you're happy, there's joy when you're sad. There's joy when it's good, there's joy when it's bad. But when you're happy, you ain't going to be happy when it's bad. When you're happy, you ain't going to be happy when you're sad. But when you have joy, now you find the place that God told you to get into. Get
get into a place of contentment, that's where joy takes me. In other words, no matter what goes on, I keep my joy. Come on, somebody. In other words, I'm going to put on my Jesus. I just put on my Jesus. Joy means J-O-Y. Jesus on you. This is my Jesus. Come in, young man. Come in. Bishop, you know I need something. You call yourself a man of God. What you think I am, huh? You think just because I got this coat on? See what I done did? I just took my Jesus off. Because he said something that didn't make me happy. You see what I'm saying? They are going to challenge you. They're going to rob you because they're going to anticipate you being, they're going to pick on your place of being a man or woman of God. Come on, have a seat. But I'm not a man of God. Told the guy this morning, I felt no, I felt no guilt. No guilt. Nobody feel no guilt? Help me out, somebody. I ain't, I ain't that flexible no more. <laughs> Y'all know why I'm feeling? He asked me, he said, Bishop he gave me this long testimony. Ah, my, my leg been broke five times. I jumped out of the car. My high head been cracked over. And, and all these things that happened to us. I said, God, dog, where are you still living? He knows who I'm talking about. Heal me up over by that wheelchair. Oh, yeah. And then he said, then he said, he said, Bishop, I ain't asked for no money for no girl. I need no money, man. I said, bro, guess what? I'm not out here to give no money. We don't give our money. Why? I said it, ain't no guilt. Why? Because I know I was sent by God. Now, if I'm a man of God, I got to give him money to prove that I'm that man. Anybody hear what I just said? And then when I give him the money, I'm proving me and I'm not letting him see Y'all see this now? Amen. I come to help you while you're in your fire, not take you out of your fire. So God, because I can't bring you out of your fire. I came to give you encouragement uh, until God brings you out of your fire. Read to me, Pastor. Stop acting like KK by that clapping so I can get to it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I saw, and there I saw a host of angels of pure spirit. Oh my God. Y'all just see what happened? I carry Mickey with me today. I carry Gail with me today. I carry Ed Dorothy with me today. I carry Mama Florence with me today. I carry Brother Brother Jesse with me today. Y'all see what happened? Y'all see what happened? You have access to everybody that's gone already in the spirit of heaven. When you enter the spirit realm, you're not by yourself. All those that you cried about, you should be glad they're gone because now your spirit is stronger. Come on, somebody. If you understand, I can be where they are right now and I ain't got to wait. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So this is not, we ain't number one family. Those on that side, those on this side, and the difference on this side, those of them on that side, they know they're with God. On this side, I don't know I'm with God. When I know I'm with God, I am where they are. I am where they are, and I'm who they with. Amen. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Am I confusing somebody? I'm confusing, raise your hand. Because I'm trying to make this real plain. That's why I'm taking my time going verse by verse. Read to me, Pastor. Without bodies. Who's doing oh. You heard it without bodies? Yes. Spirits. People that they, we think are dead, they happen to us. With these dead folk that want to accept God, Jesus, so they can get to God. You hear that? So your mama, huh? See what I'm saying? Your, your wretched uncle, he up there helping us. <laughs> Daddy, right? That's his name, Daddy. Yeah. Oh, you know how I know Daddy? Because he right here helping me preach this forever right now. <laughs> Connect y'all. I'm trying to let you know ain't nothing wrong with, with dying. I'm trying to let you know that that's where your power comes from. Once I die, I'm already on the other side. I'm already dead. Can I tell you how I know I'm dead? Are y'all ready for this? I did some things that I that I, that I, I ain't got no business doing since I've been a bishop. But there ain't nothing happened to me because dead folk can't see those that are living on the other side working for God. Amen. Anybody heard what I just said? Yes. Pastor, am I, am I going too deep, Pastor? Huh? Right. Okay. Anybody, if, I, if I lose you, raise your hand. You are going through what you're going through because guess what? You're already in the kingdom of God. 
And the reason you can't be destroyed because those that are not in the kingdom can't see you and they can't touch you. Anybody hear me? Now you now you seeing something, bro. Now you see, you know what? I really am all right. I really am supposed to be dead. I really am supposed to. See, guess what? He ain't on the COVID list. He might have had COVID, but guess what? He got beyond COVID. He ain't on the COVID list. Y'all know what the COVID list is? Anybody know what the COVID list is? Those that didn't make it. All of us had COVID. We overcame COVID. But because, guess what? COVID can't touch us. Because <laughs> we already in the kingdom. Oh, Jesus. Read to me, Pastor. As I, well, who were the body, I'm sorry, Bishop, who were upon the seventh firmament, as I was standing upon, standing suspended over them. As I was standing suspended over them, you are in the kingdom of God. I'm going to let this go in a minute, and I'm going I'm, I'm I'm to take you home. Read to me, Pastor. I know it's little. <laughs> and I look down. Come, come, Pastor, come stand right here. Come stand right here. I'm telling you, that light will help you. Yes, sir. You all right? I tell you what, I tell you. So I can't have somebody give me, give me, give me the phone. Turn your light on. Give me now watch this. I want you to watch this. Watch this. Turn your light on. The phone. Now she got. It. Turn your light on. The phone. Y'all watch this. I'm Jesus. Ain't nobody gonna come hold the light so I can preach. Jesus Christ. Hold that light, girl. Ah, Jesus Christ. My God. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. I put the light in your hand you don't want to grab it. Y'all run around the daytime trying to find your man with a, with a flashlight in the daytime. Oh, Read to me, Pastor. And I looked down on the sixth firmament. Is that better? Yes. Okay, I looked down. See, see what happens when you bring light to the situation? Yeah. Huh? You make things better when you come as the light of God. Hello, somebody. Hey. Read to me, Pastor. Somebody hold the light for me. Ah. And I looked down on the now, let, her let, her, let her be a part of the kingdom work. And there was no other powers of any form. Only I, the angels appeared spirit. Read that again. Read that again. I looked down on the sixth firmament. I looked down. I looked. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I'm in, I'm in heaven. I'm in the seventh, seventh firmament. I'm in heaven. I'm in the seventh firmament. I looked down on the what? Sixth firmament. Sixth firmament. I'm in heaven. Looking down on earthly things, knowing it can't reach me, because I'm already in what? Heaven. I'm looking down at that circumstance. But what's going on is that six firmament is making me think it has power and got me looking up to it, and it ain't even up, it's down. Oh my God. Anybody heard what I just said? That six firmament. It's making me think it's got power, and the only way it can make me think it's got power when I start listening to my self. When I start listening to myself, because you know what self gonna tell you? You can't do this. You know what self gonna tell you? You need to go get some help from somebody. Because self wanna look on, and, and, and then do you know what self gonna send you? Self gonna send you to somebody who's selfish. So that selfish person can make you say, I, I don't love you because you won't help me. Now, but hear this now. This is how self orchestrates this movie. Anybody hear it? That's why you can't deal with self. That's why you got to stop listening to your. So, Jerry, you, you, am, I, am I too long and boring today? Wait, who said, mm -hmm? I heard you rap. What? I heard
I'm looking for the righteous one. So what is he saying? Every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow. Even those that don't look like angels now are angels to, to be. Hello, somebody. Even those that don't look like angels now are angels to be. Hello, somebody. So all I saw when I was up here, huh? I saw the boy breaking in my car, stealing my computer, but he looked like an angel to me. Today, but not last week. <laughs> Anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. When I look down, you find what you're looking for. If I'm looking to be homeless, I'm going to stay what? Hello, somebody. But you walked up here today, you, you ain't say nothing about homeless. You say, I want, I want more God. I want to be a part of this church. That's on him. When you walk in this church, a spirit takes over you. A spirit of a power, a spirit of I can. But then when you walk out of this church, there's going to be something that's going to drain, try and drain that spirit out of you, and it's going to be those voices around you, and they're going to remind you even the more what you what, where you're not. But you learn today, I'm already in heaven. I'm already in heaven. My spirit led me. Your spirit led. See, he already he there. He realized the spirit of heaven led him. The seventh firmament led him. Firmament means heaven. Read to me, Pastor. I was standing on its elevation, and on this firmament there was nothing in any form and no other host, but only the spiritual angels. Read. I saw a host on the seventh firmament, and he commanded that the sixth firmament should be removed from my sight. And I saw there on the fifth element the powers of the stars, which carry out the commands laid upon them. And the elements of the earth obeyed them. Anybody got this? I ain't supposed to see nobody wrong and believe in God. If I believe in Jesus, I might have that. I'm just, I'm just a Christian. I'm not yet a child of God. As a Christian, I, I, I'm going to have my ups and downs. Hello, somebody. Because as a Christian, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm growing into learning how to be God's child. Hello, somebody. Nobody can accept, nobody can get to the Father except through the Son. Hello, somebody. So as a Christian, I am growing into being, coming a child of God. And when I become a child of God, all I see is my brothers and sisters. I don't see no wrong they do. And, 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 and this, I treat them like they're my children. I love them like I know who they belong to. Their fire says... Their fire is my opportunity to step in where they are. I want to step in where you are. The day I stepped in to where the brothers and sisters are. When I go out, I don't talk about my addiction that often. I don't talk about prison, but, but every now and then God says, some of these have been in prison. Some of these are on drugs. They need to know I work there too. I, need, I work there too. Because you know what it takes? It takes someone who's been in that fire. And when you recognize it and, and, and you felt like he ain't scared of this. Because every spirit is out there. Porn is a demon. Drugs is a demon. Lying is a demon. Jealousy is a demon. But I'm going to tell you something. When you start walking with God, a demon is a demon is a demon. Do you hear what I just said? Huh? A demon is a demon is a demon is a demon. So they try to get you caught up by categorizing the demons. But a demon is a demon. If I know one, I know them all. And the way I answer all of them is I forget about them. I don't give them no power by recognizing them. I, give, I don't give this sister no power by saying, you got to sleep with a demon in church. And you done rubbed up on my church no more. What I, the what I do, I ignore all demons. What are you saying? I, I ignore anything that's negative. Because if I don't ignore what's negative, I'm ignorant because I'm ignoring God. And His power. Can be slowly and clearly. If I address you and talk about I'm going to help you with your situation, I got to answer to you. I'm, ignoring, I'm ignorant because I'm ignoring the power of who? God. I'm supposed to come to you and make you say, how can you do this? 
How can you be a bishop and stand up here and tell us that you, you, you've been in your power? How can, you know why? Because then you know that God is working. That's right. God is working. Yes. I ain't worried about how you look at me. I just need, as a matter of fact, I don't want you to look at me. I try to provoke everybody, Pastor, to say, how can you do this? And then they'll know my love is for real. Because if I can explain my love, it ain't love. Because can't nobody explain God and God is love. Hello, somebody. Are we all right? So next time you say, baby, why you love me? And if he don't say, I don't know, he need a little work. If he tell you why he loves you, he trying to please you and get you to get you to get him an answer back. <coughs> and don't you get mad. No, 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 most times if they say, I don't know, you don't know. You don't know. That's the perfect love. He said, I done got that one. He know that laugh. <laughs> don't laugh in church, the bishop gonna catch you. You don't know. Look at she, she done been there too. She got her, she got her man too. She back to laugh. Y'all understand what I'm saying? When you say, I don't know, you're, you're, you're perfectly set up for God to work his love through you. You're perfectly set up for God to make them say, how can I look at my wife? After all we've been through over the eight years together, ten years apart, while being together, y'all, y'all missed that. Because we were never separated. God put her in a place to teach her to deal with me, and he put me in a place to teach me to deal with her. We were never separated. And the way God teaches you to deal with what loves you, he gives you something that don't appreciate you. And then when you get back with what loves you, 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 you'll you'll know love where there's no appreciation, there's no love. Hello, somebody. Are we all right? Out of all the years that we've been together, why would she get back with me? She got no reason except I love this fool. Why would she deal with me? She got no reason except I love this fool. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Huh? The fire is your witness. And if you are a witness of the fire, you display the power of God. You cannot display the power of God without stepping into somebody else's fire. That indicates that I'm not scared. That indicate I don't care what demon you deal with, we're going to focus on who? God. And when you start focusing on God and not the demon, the demon can't hear from Satan, so he got to go because he's scared of who? God. Anybody hearing this today? I really want to take my time today. I really want you to feel this today. I want you to stop being scared. Walk, accept, count it not strange of the fiery trials and darks that are coming your way. They're coming because of who you are to God. If you ain't special to God, I ain't got to mess with you. Because you ain't got no power. But if you're special to God, I got to make you homeless. If you're special to God, I got to make you think you're addict. If you're special to God, I got to make you think don't nobody want you. If you're special to God, I got to make you think your church ain't the church you're supposed to be in. If you're special to God, I got to make something, I got to come at you. You're special to God, angel. That's why it's coming. But, 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 but look at, look at her, in, her, in her place of being special to God, look at what she don't turn her back on, church. That's right, that's right. Y'all want to be special in the natural, but when I'm special in the spirit, when the natural is not strong, I, I, I still show that I am strong. Come on, somebody. I've been through a lot since I've been a bishop. I've been through a lot since I've been a pastor. I've been through a lot since I've been born. Oh, my grandmother took me to church. That's why you don't go no more because grandma ain't him? Huh? Oh, my mama took me to church. That's why you don't go no more because you don't live in her house? When you going to recognize God brought you to church through your grandma? When you going to recognize that God brought you to church through your mom? And he did that to prepare you for the fire that one day you were going to deal with when you became ignorant of him. You start ignoring him. Saying, I ain't going. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. I ain't loving nobody. Because that says, I am ignorant. I am ignoring God and I ain't doing God no more. That's good. Ignorant. 
I'm ignoring God and I ain't doing church no more. And I promise you, you better learn how to get up there and get on your knees and don't. And I hope you don't let God make you get on your knees. Because he done told you you're going to get on your knees. And you're going to confess the truth to yourself. Bitch, if they were born today, born is good. Born lasts. Boring lasts. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Come on now. And you know why y'all can't really y'all y'all don't feel like y'all attaching to this? Come on, coming from a book that you don't know. If I was really coming from the Bible preaching the same thing, y'all be shouting because of y'all can attach it to something somebody that taught you from these scriptures. I'm giving you scriptures you ain't never heard no more. That's why it seemed foreign to you. But somebody say something that's new. Repeat after me, something that's new. And I never heard. It's strange to me. Because it don't line up with my knowledge. Because it's the fresh anointing. Because it's the fresh anointed wisdom of God. That's where you at right now. When y'all feel the power that y'all gonna have to deal with this world this week. Because of what you heard today. You're gonna say, Amen, Bishop. Thank you for letting God embarrass you so I could be saved. Thank you for going through what you went through and witnessing it so I could be delivered. Thank you for you going through and not being ashamed to say where you've been so I don't feel no guilt. You're not guilty. You're already in heaven. You just don't know it because you think you got to work for it. Those on the sixth firmament, you're sixth firmament, Pastor? Yep. Six means work, right? Yes. Seven means rest, right? Just live and let live. Whatever comes, you're so connected to God because you're going to come to church no matter what, you know who did it. God did it. How, how can Sister Jerry have so much peace? Because she knows she's in the loving hands of who? God. Anybody with me? Yes. Anybody with me? The fire is my witness. My bishop today, he read from a book that just, I ain't never heard no scriptures like that. You never will. <laughs> wow. Look at somebody in the name and you tell, I don't need no help with this because I, I, I know he's going to do a little bit of it. Because I feel it. Your anointing is going to allow you to bless somebody and not want something for it. My Lord. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever this life leads you. Let me encourage you. Mm -hmm. Let me speak life to you. You can depend on God to see you through. You can depend on me to pray for you. You might be hurting. You might be worrying. You might be in trouble because I forgot the words. But let God bless you. But let God bless you. Let him bless you today. Know that what you're going through is so he they can see you walk out of this fiery building and they'll know that God is with you. The only reason y'all still with Bishop, they say all the foolish things I done seen him do and he still preach with that power. All the foolish things I done seen him do and he still walk around here with obvious blessings. You say God has to be with him. Let God walk out the fire with you. And when he walks out, by, what are you going to do when he walks out to fight with you? He's going to send you back in there by yourself with somebody else. 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. What a mighty, mighty word. We pray that that word hit your spirit in all the right places and that you indulge and you partake and meditate on it to be um, present in your life and also to share and be present in somebody else's life. Um, we're going to go ahead and pray our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that word that you delivered through Bishop today. Praise God. We thank you for always giving him a right now word that we need. Lord God, let it be able to strengthen us physically and spiritually and mentally, Lord God. But furthermore, God, we ask that you strengthen him physically, mentally, and spiritually. That he, all the things that may trouble about him, Lord God, he knows how to put it under subjection of the will of you. So we thank you for that word that brought, he brought forth today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so this is the time we're going to collect our tithing. We're going to have to collect our tithing.